Hello everyone and welcome back to the United Star. Today we're doing a top six review of obviously we did a United review and barring the uh, the other five teams, we've got Shivan here with us to do that review. So we're going to talk about how these teams did and how far are United away from challenging these teams in their respective positions. So obviously first we're going to start off with the champions Liverpool. Of course they played brilliant football and they won the league. But Shivan, do you think at some uh, level Liverpool fans could be disappointed here because? At one stage, it looked like they'll be invincible. At another stage, it looked like a treble was on. At another stage, it looked like they will uh, finish with 100 points and nothing happened. They sort of exploded after they won that champion. They won it, they just imploded. So, how do you rate their season? So, if you ask Liverpool fans, no one will admit that they're disappointed. But at least, they, at December, they had the league locked up. So, since December, you can say they've underperformed on expectations. Because at December, they were being compared to the United uh, treble team, they were compared to the Invincibles, the Chelsea, the 2004 5 team. But I think if you look at it, they've had a great season for sure. But in the key moments, I feel they've not done as well as we expected them to do. They lost in, against Chelsea in the FA Cup, they crashed down in the League Cup. Yes, they played a, a second string team. And in the Champions League, after 16, they got knocked out. So, yeah, it's been a great season. But it's not been one of those amazing seasons like that will be talked about in the next 20 years, like how the treble team or the Invincibles or the 95-point Mourinho team is. Because it could have been great. It could have been a 103 points. It could have been going invincible. It could have been like reaching cup finals. But I don't think they had a squad to that. They were Liverpool are the best first eleven in the country. But I think if you take out uh, like their squad depth, is not that great and that's why they didn't, they didn't go so far. So, I feel it's been a great season. Obviously, they won the league after 30 years. But if you ask a Liverpool fan in their heart of hearts, they'd probably be disappointed considering how well they started the season. So, Shivan, two questions before we move on from Liverpool. How far are United actually away from Liverpool to compete uh, with them? And the second question is, does the fact that they didn't get any of the things you said remove them out of the debate of one of the best teams to have won the Premier League? Um, in terms of United, see United are 30 points of Liverpool, 33 points of Liverpool. They are at least 2-3 seasons away from challenging. You are not challenging the league next year, even if you will get Jadon Sancho in my opinion. Because Liverpool need to regress and United need to improve. So, United need at least 3 signings. They need a centre-back, they need a right-winger, they need a central midfielder who is not Nemanja Matic. And then they can consider challenging for the league. And Liverpool need to regress in terms of all their players not improving over the span of the next 2-3 years. So, I think you're still two seasons away from challenging for the league. In terms of, uh, what are the next question, sorry? Uh, uh, will they be, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll be the top teams. I think they will be because um, if you look at the two-year two, two year span, Liverpool this year haven't been as, they haven't improved compared to last year. They got 96 points last year, they got 99 this year. So, they haven't in 97 last year, 99 this year. So, only two points improvement. The reason why Liverpool looks so good this year is because City has been so shit. So, I feel like eventually they'll be brought up in conversation, but they won't be as good as the United treble team or the Arsenal uh, Invincible team, in my opinion. Okay. I, I kind of agree with you. I also think that why I think United will be able to challenge Liverpool more uh, frequently or more sooner than you think is because I feel I see Liverpool regressing a lot faster. Because uh, their team, as you said, is the 11 is strong and then there is not much sort of backbone out there in that team. So, but let's move on to Man City. In my view, Man City out of all the teams would be the most disappointed team of, uh, after the end of the season. Defending champions and not at I mean, after the first three weeks of the season, it did not look like they were competing for the title. Very inconsistent performances. I know they were struggling with injuries. What would you make of their season? The fact that Manchester United have lost less games in the Premier League than Manchester City talks about it all. City have lost nine games this season, which is more than they have in the last two seasons combined. So, the last three seasons under Pep Guardiola combined. So, it's been a complete implosion in the back. Yeah, losing Laporte is a big problem. They didn't replace Vincent Company. Left back, I don't know what they're doing with Mendy, Zinchenko, and um, who else? Uh, Angelino. They don't have a proper left back. So in the end, it'll be a disappointing season for City, considering they spent 50 million on Lepo on Cancelo, they spent 60 million on Rodri. They didn't really sell anyone, and they've come second, but they've not been in the league conversation since October, as you said. So I feel like they'll be very disappointed. And if Guardiola doesn't win the Champions League this year, I feel like it'll be a terrible season for City. 
and uh, as like you rightly said like on paper overall manchester city have got the best squad uh, even better than yeah, liverpool no. because the replacements are incredible so apart from the uh, defensive lapses that you said where do you think they went wrong was it just the fact that they won two in a row and they sort of lost out in terms of fatigue or in terms of sort of mental tiredness or where do you think because kevin de bruyne was phenomenal yeah um so i feel like it is a bit of a mentality thing so yeah winning two in a row uh, defending a title is a challenge but winning three in a row is like we've seen that you you you, you do drop off me- mentally like you don't have Liverpool are more motivated this season than uh, Manchester City were because they lost last year, so they had that hunger and fight. And you, City lost to teams like Norwich. They lost to Wolves twice. They lost to they lost to uh, Newcastle. They drew to Newcastle away. They lost to United twice when you weren't good. So um, they've not. They've been so weak at the back because finally, when even when Arsenal played City in that cup final. Cup semi final, you felt like you could get at them. You could get at the left back. You could get at Otamendi or Stone who was playing. So finally, after two years, they had weaknesses you could exploit, which they didn't have last year. That's why I think they lost. They didn't done so badly this year. Right, right. I mean, doing three in a row is just for uh, great teams, I, I suppose. Uh, well, I, but to be very honest, I'm more scared <laughs> of the City squad than I am of the Liverpool team because I feel from a United perspective, it'll be harder to beat them just because how much depth they have and sort of the. Uh, bottomless funds they keep uh, getting from I don't know where. Uh, but let's move on yeah. from City. Uh, let's let's yeah, okay. talk about Chelsea. And I think that is an interesting one because, I mean, the English press would have you believe that Frank Lampard is the best manager the world has ever seen. But uh, having said that, he had no transfers. He lost Eden Hazard, who probably, arguably, was the best player in the league. And yet, they managed yeah, a fourth-place finish. So, what do you think about their season? Um, so at the start of the season, no one would have expected Chelsea to be where they are. I feel I didn't predict them to reach four, top four, but they've been inconsistent because they're a young side, they're an attacking side, they're an exciting side. But after the start that they had, if you remember, Chelsea won 17 games in the league uh, between November to February, but they only won four games. So they have been very inconsistent. Uh, Kepa is probably probably the biggest flop of a Premier League signing in its history. 70 million for someone who can't save a shot is like this un- incredible. So I feel like Frank Lampard has done an okay job. I'd give him a 7 out of 10 if you're talking about his job he's done compared to, in terms of bringing up the youth, someone like Tomori, Reese James, Mason Mount. They've all excelled under Frank Lampard's leadership. And I think with the signings now that they get next season, I feel like Chelsea are the biggest threat in terms of Manchester United for competing in that top three spot. Because they are good. They're, they're getting in Havertz, they're getting in Werner, and they're getting in uh, Ziyech. And they are, they are the closest competitors right now to Manchester United to compete for the top two. Right. I mean, I kind of agree with you in that. Like, I am scared of like the signings they're getting. But I won't believe that Frank Lampard is a master tactician. I don't think that is true. Because clearly, Chelsea have been one of the most inconsistent teams this season, like you said. Yeah. And, I mean, like... A lot like United in the first half of the season, you wouldn't know which Chelsea is going to turn up when. Uh, but yeah, yeah, fair play to Frank Lampard and Chelsea that they finished in the fourth spot because not many people expected them to. Uh, let's move on now to the to your North London rivals, um, Tottenham Hotspur. Spurs had an interesting season. Everyone thought that they're going to be in the top four after the season last year in the Champions League and things like that. But this season, Poch came in and just wasn't able to do anything. And it was almost as if he wanted to leave even before the season started. And then they were in 14th spot when Mourinho took over. And they finished in 6th. So, what do you think of Spurs' season in terms of everything that's gone on? And like just what Mourinho has been able to achieve? So, I think it's fashionable to criticize Mourinho and to like say he's done as a manager. Uh, I don't think he's the manager he once was. But actually, the job he's done at Tottenham has been pretty great. Because since he joined in October and since then, he practically had all his players out injured. He Ericsson left, but Tongan was injured, Kane got injured, Ali got injured, Son got injured. So they were terrible up till February, but in the restart we've seen how okay, Spurs haven't been great, but they've done better than what we expected Mourinho to do. And I feel like if you look at the start after last season, after they won the Champions League, we expected Spurs to kick on from that and become this great and be a top four consistent team as we as like the teams in the past were. But they've just completely imploded, I feel, and they've really 
felt the like they uh, bear the brunt of not strengthening their squad two seasons ago when they went to uh, windows without, without making a signing because their team looks done on paper like they needed some new fresh they needed fresh like they needed new and all their signings so far have actually not paid off they bought in dombley for 60 million we better to forget that they got the seller for like 50 million like you know i think it was a way off where they were last season they took a huge backward step and honestly i don't see mourinho bringing spurs back to the top like um because i don't think mourinho is the manager to win you a title he can win you a cup but i don't think spurs, mourinho is the manager to win spurs a title and get them back into the top four i feel they are way off compared to where united and chelsea and all the other teams are right i think you've summed it up quite nicely in terms of what's wrong over at spurs and what sort of in terms of what may be right because they do have some quality players in kane son ali uh, so yeah but now let's move on to the final team your team uh, arsenal uh, how would you rate sort of uh, what emery did with the entire sort of arsenal has two facets to it because one is sort of the board absolutely not being involved with the club and then also what happened with jaka and the on field antics that happened there and then arteta coming in and Do you think the club has made actual progress under Arteta because the table doesn't show that uh, they've not moved that forward with him? Um, so, in the Emery is probably the he is he ruined the club when uh, when he left Arsenal in November. Arsenal were in complete tatters. Like we were broken club, we were broken fan base. The players didn't want to play. Like the play, the dressing room was gone. So. in terms of the job arteta has done to take us from where we were at that point to take us where we are right now where we beat city and we beat liverpool and we're in the fa cup final and we can have silverware at the end of the season arteta league results have been great because he's dealing he's not dealing with his players he's still dealing with david luiz and mustafi and sayad kolasinac and um, like players like that who can't defend so arteta probably has the biggest job out of any of the top 6 managers I don't see Arsenal challenging for top four next season because Arsenal aren't going to invest. Um, we don't have the finances the other teams do, so we aren't going to invest, and that's why Arsenal is still way off um, reaching the top four, even challenging for the league. That's like a dream right now. But um, in terms of the job Arteta has done, if you watch how Arsenal play, if you watch his interviews, we finally have something that we never had under Emery. That's an identity. We have a tactic of how we're going to set up how we're going to attack uh what shaka's role is so what abamyang does what are wing backs supposed to do so there's some promising signs in terms of ajeda i i firmly believe he is the guy to take us right to the top but it's going to be a slow and painful process right i think you've covered that completely i don't think i have any i think you covered all the points i would have asked you otherwise so uh, going into this yeah. i think uh, you've heard what shivan has to say i think i completely agree with the analysis of the teams i think it's very on point and we aren't saying that either united or arsenal from shivan's perspective are going to win the league next season i don't think that's happening I mean, a miracle would make that happen but uh, just one final thing which team out of the six is the most happy with where they finished and which team is the most disappointed in your view So I think it has to be Liverpool. Liverpool are the happiest where they finished because thirty years won a league title. It's great. Like ninety nine points. It's like the second highest points total in history. And if you look at uh, where in even in March where you really expect the season to finish, there was doubts about that. So we finally got the season done and Liverpool have won the title. I feel like it's been a weight lifted off their shoulder. So they have to be the happiest. And in terms of the most disappointed, I'd probably say it's Manchester City because. Pep, a minimum requirement for Pep is to win the title at least, and then a bonus in the Champions League. And they've had the biggest point; they've had, they were 18 points off compared to last season. So, in terms of the drop off, City have been the worst team compared to last year, and they've been the most disappointed. Absolutely, and it, keep in mind if Pep does not get the Champions League, he will go without winning a trophy this year. And that will be something. So they, they won the league cup. They won the league cup. Right, right. So we don't consider that. Yeah, we, well, not not a, not by Pep standards, not by the amount of money he spends. So yeah. uh, thanks, Shivan, for coming in today and uh, giving us a nice analysis of what's happened in the top six. Guys, let us know in the comments what you all think, and also subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for a lot more.